Hello everyone and welcome to a new Jurassic World Evolution 2 video. So with the release of the Cretaceous Predator Pack, it added four highly re requested species of the Predator line of animals from prehistory, like, like the Utah Raptor, Gigantoraptor, Tarbosaurus and Concavenator. Today we're going to be discussing um, some future update features that could, that could be added to the game. We've got some really good ones um, this time around, like the benches and bins that I know a lot of people have been asking for, as well as various other um, quality of life improvements. But we're going to be discussing some of the more chunky features that um, that could be added to Jurassic World Evolution 2. And yeah, if you have any, f any more ideas, um, be sure to put them in the comments down below. But um, yeah, let's see what update features could still be added to Jurassic World Evolution 2. Okay, so the first ones are some new attractions. So the game has a few attractions in the game. So like viewing galleries, viewing platforms, gyrospheres, uh, Jurassic Tour, and the zip line, as well as some of the remote viewing galleries, like the viewing domes, both, both on land and in water, and the viewing log. So um, one of these new attractions could be the Cretaceous Cruise, a, an attraction that was seen in Jurassic World, where guests will travel down a river in a kayak, seeing dinosaurs on the shoreline. So in this scene, you see you have the guests in the water and they're looking at these stegosauruses and apatosauruses. This is something that a lot of people have wanted in the game um, since the first one, actually. So it would be really cool to see in Jurassic World Evolution 2, and it could sort of work like having a track that the guests will follow on their kayaks. So that could be how that sort of works. Another attraction seen in Camp Cretaceous Hidden Adventure was sort of like a animatronic jeep ride. We have animatronic dinosaurs um, giving guests a, a thrill in a jeep safari type tour. So that's one of them. And another attraction from Hidden Adventure was the um, roller coaster. So that would be another cool feature to really evoke that theme park vibe. And hopefully your guests won't have a Tarbosaurus trying to chomp on them while they ride the roller coaster. Um, another attraction seen in the Jurassic World Park is the Aquatic Park. So this is a mix of different pools, water slides, um, some spas, and some... What are they called? Uh, sort of like those, those huts that you... Gazebos, that, that's, the, <laughs> that's what I was looking for. But having, it, having an aquatic park in Jurassic World Evolution 2 would certainly be a cool thing to see, especially alongside our lagoons. We could make a, a full-on sea parks um, in Jurassic World Evolution 2. And we've already got the zip line that's right here, so yeah. I mean, if we could get that zip line design, that would be a really cool idea as well. Um, um, another obvious attraction is the addition of petting zoos. So this would be having baby dinosaurs, um, of course, but hey, if Frontier can just do baby dinosaurs for the film species, then makes it a much easier task, because um, then you don't have to do the whole 90 dinosaurs um, that are in the game currently, you just have to do a few. So maybe just the ones that were on Isla Nublar, not really focusing on the biosyn, like they could add future baby dinosaurs down the line, and these could just be variants that never really grow up, or um, just and just stay the same. But hey, however it works, um, petting zoos are, de are definite for Jurassic World Evolution 2 that we should see. Um, another one that people have asked for is a balloon tour. So this is an attraction that was in Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. And yeah, I, seeing it in game, it is honestly a very cool idea. So yeah. Balloon tour, that would be a really cool one. Um, um, another obvious update feature is new animations for pterosaurs. So such as social interactions and particularly for Quetzalcoatlus, the ability to walk. As as dark and pterosaurs are known for walking on land and hunting on the, on the ground as well. So that would be a really cool feature to implement, particularly for the Quetzalcoatlus, as it is sort of central to its character as a pterosaur. On to some marine behaviours, 
um, interacting with flying species and dinosaurs are two things that the Mosasaurus in particular has done very well. So um, seeing the Mosasaurus probably leap up and grab a pterosaur that's curiously hovering over the lagoon. And if there's a dinosaur that's close by the edge of the lagoon, the Mosasaurus could jump out and drag it to the drag it down to the depths. Um, but these are two features that a lot of people have been asking for for a very long time, and I would certainly love to see Frontier um, try and add these to the game, as these would be fantastic behaviours. Um, in the last update, we just got um, some new variants for some of the existing species in the game. So um, there are a couple of other dinosaurs that have different models to some of their current versions. Four of these are Triceratops 1993, which could triple as a Lost World Triceratops and a Jurassic Park 3 Triceratops. Others are the Isla Nublar Velociraptors from Jurassic Park in the Lost World, having their own unique model, and the Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptors having their own model. And it would be interesting having those as variants, particularly the 2001s, as you've got a male and a female. I mean, the female could just be another skin or it's or a variant in itself um we'll have to see how that could work out and the feathered t-rex from the dominion bison expansion given its um different model uh, well i say different model it's unique feathering that it's got um that would certainly be um a good way to implement some new skins for the t-rex another variant i didn't include here was the dominion parasaurolophus um and perhaps even parasaurolophus lux making those two variants to get some really cool colors going. Um, another feature from Jurassic Park Operation Genesis is island generation. For Evolution 2, it could be adapted to map generation, where you can pick the shape, the, the amount of foliage, the rivers, the mountains, all that sort of stuff. And for Evolution 2, you could go one better and even pick where these are and really get a good grasp on how your island is going to work and how you're going to be able to weave that park in. If we add rivers to the map, um, bridges would certainly be a, a nice addition as well for guests to cross over rivers um, and even dinosaurs to cross over rivers, but they could just walk through or um, do whatever in the water as well. But this would be a really cool feature to give players full control over, over their parks and how their parks will look. Another feature that was in Operation Genesis was the visitors. So the visitors had a specific personality, the amount of dinosaurs they wanted to see, the country that they're from, all that sort of thing. They had their names as well. And being able to track your guests would be a great way of like giving them more depth and not having them as just. I want to say soulless beings, but that's not quite it. Um, but it, it would give you as a park manager more attachment to your visitors as you you would be able to learn about them and see um, what they like to see in your parks. I mean, Evolution 2 has done um, sort of that with the different types of guests. So you've got adventure guests, luxury, nature, and general guests. But if you were able to go one better and give these guests their own nature, that would certainly be a good step in the right direction for improving the guests and making them a, a central to how your park functions. That would be a really cool way to, yeah, just make the guests better. As um, I, I, it would be interesting. You're, you're going around your park, you you tap on a guest, a dinosaur escapes, and you're able to see which guest that you've gotten to know is probably within the danger range of a dinosaur. So yeah, that would that would certainly be interesting. Um, here we've got a collection of different um, things from Jurassic World. So a combined um, amphitheater for the for the lagoon that would certainly be one of my number one picks for a new feature. Being able to have a combined array of viewing galleries with an attached shark feeder, being able to really recreate that Mosasaurus feeding show. Another thing that you can see in this image is a lagoon fence. So this could be attached to this amphitheater or to another viewing gallery. And you can just spread that across the lagoon and create these different areas where you keep different marine reptiles. And um, 
of course, different shaped hotels. So having different kinds of hotels in your parks would also be cool. You can also see a golf course in the background. Having a golf course as an attraction would be interesting, even though you kind of got that um, as the mini golf attraction in your um, guest attraction building. But having these open air attractions, that would be really cool. Um, you can also see T-Rex Kingdom here with its grandstand um, arena-like viewing. Um, T-Rex Kingdom also having its own unique kind of fence. And this could function very similar to how the Jurassic um, Park San Diego Amphitheater works. Um, sort of, <laughs> you just put the dinosaur in the middle and having its own unique gate as well. That would be really cool. Um, back to the lagoons. Lagoon gates between the enclosures would be really cool. And in this scene, you also have a submarine. So maybe having a submarine tour as well, that would be quite cool. Um, another thing that was in the Jurassic World concept art um, is, a is well, and that was in the actual movie, is the control set to helipad. It would be really cool if we could actually have a helipad as part of um, the control center, as then you can really recreate Jurassic World properly, rather than having to place a capture team next to next to that control center to sort of evoke a similar feeling. It would be cool if a T-Rex could walk up the hill, climb onto that helipad, and do the iconic roar from the end of Jurassic World. I think that would be really cool. Um, a ground level monorail station as well as seen in Jurassic World, if you look very closely, that is. Um, so this would start from the ground and climb up to a similar level as the monorail that we currently have. But hey, even adjusting the height of monorail tracks, that would be a really cool idea. And if you can see uh, on the bottom left, Jurassic World walls, um, that would be a really cool placeable feature to better recreate the, the park itself. And other factors for monorails is giving access to that Jurassic World gate. So we've seen it in um, the Jurassic World Evolution 2 trailers and um, some of Frontier's builds as being something that players could use. But um, yeah, if, if we were actually able to have access to this, that would be a really cool way to add some more creativity to how you structure your monorails and such. It would just be a cool feature, just saying. Another thing from Jurassic World is the Raptor Compound. Um, this would also function similar to how um, the San Diego Amphitheater works, as you've got an open section to that compound, which goes out into a larger enclosure where the Velociraptor is able to run out and explore their surroundings. So that would be a cool feature as well, and being able to hold your raptors in the holding cage there on the side of the compound, that would be really cool, and having staff members going up and down the stairs and across the catwalks and all that that would be a really cool feature another cool feature would be a larger aviary so having access to a full jurassic world aviary um, i think that'd be really cool in making a larger space for your flying reptiles to soar around and do whatever they want in the sky and having waterfalls as part of that that would be extra cool yeah just having a large aviary option that'd be That'd be really cool, and it'd be better for holding Quetzalcoatlus as well, as Quetzalcoatlus really doesn't seem to fit well in a small aviary. Um, other features include um, more live feeders, so the deer from Dominion, a live great white shark, the cow from Jurassic Park, and the pig from Jurassic World and the raptor compound. I think all of these would make really fun um, live prey options as. Um, yeah, it would add to the enrichment of the animals, although the deer was killed just because the fairy didn't like it. Um, also being able to transport dinosaurs in cages, I think this would be a really cool way to um, allow for ground transportation of your dinosaurs. So like you could have a, a whole new team implemented, the transport team, um, having the helicopters come in from the coast, but also having a ground team that will um, be able to have the, the cage with the dinosaur on the back. Um, and we'd have to have different sizes, of course, uh, depending on the dinosaur. And then, like, the cage door opens and the dinosaur is released into the enclosure. That could be the sort of feature they do. I only use this picture as it's the only one I could really find. A big feature would be a custom hybridization system. 
So being able to mix and match your dinosaurs to create um, completely unique hybrids. This would be a good way to get those hybrids from Jurassic World Evolution, the Spinoraptor, Ankylodocus, and Stegoceratops into Evolution 2, as you'd be able to mix the Spinosaurus and potentially, now that we've got it, the Utah Raptor. And yeah, create a, a large Spino Raptor with feathers, potentially. I think it would be a good way to create some of the hybrids that you've seen in games like Jurassic World, the game, uh, Jurassic World Live, potentially. And yeah, who knows? Maybe even the legendary Ultimasaurus could be made if you were able to mix more than two creatures into make a hybrid. Um, another feature would be the return of the maps from Jurassic World Evolution. So Isla Matanceros, Isla Muerta, Isla Tecano, Isla Pena, um, and potentially Sanctuary as well. So having these islands as part of the game would yeah, it would be, be a good call back to the first and really link all the Jurassic Park lore together. Um, another arrival station could be the ferry. So having access to a full Isla Nublar map and potentially a section on the ocean or a few sections, given that there were two or three docks on Isla Nublar in the t at the time of Jurassic World, you'd be able to have an arrival point where a ferry comes in from the ocean and delivers guests to the island. I think that would be a really cool feature to properly recreate Jurassic World if you really want to go full on and recreate the entire movie. Um, another cool feature that I would like to see is more unique kill animations based on movie fights. So um, we got that with the Spinosaurus um, at the time of the Prehistoric Marine Species Pack, where it was given its iconic kill of large carnivores, where it whips around grabs the, um, say, the T-Rex by the neck and twists it. So other kills like the T-Rex taking down the Carnotaurus. So Carnotaurus charges at the T-Rex, T-Rex throws it down, steps on it and does the big roar and then crushes the Carnotaurus under its foot and then wanders off. That could be really cool. Giga killing the T-Rex in its unique way um, as well. That would be cool. And maybe even having a mix, having the prologue fight and the actual Dominion fight, um, both as potentially um, variable um, endings to your Giganotosaurus versus T-Rex fights. I think that would be a really cool um, thing to have in, and potentially even um, having the, what was it, the, uh, the Sinoceratops versus the Carnotaurus as well. Having that as a unique fight would be cool as well, and Battle of Big Rock Allosaurus versus the Pseudoceratops. There's a lot of fights that could um, be really well recreated into Jurassic World Evolution 2. Um, speaking of other fights, you've also got sauropods versus um, predators. So currently sauropods do not um, fight against their attackers, they just let it happen. Um, so being able to introduce sauropods as a way to... It's giving them a fighting chance, basically. If you have something like here, we see a Shunosaurus attacking um, Yangchuanosaurus, it being able to um, use its tail and its neck and potentially even a front stomp onto its um, attackers, that, those would be some really cool ways as to how sauropods could defend themselves. And not just against predators, but also each other. So as seen in Prehistoric Planet, you saw two Dreadnoughtus um, go head to head, or should I say neck to neck. Um, in a really, really cool fight. Um, so being able to see sauropods actually go up against each other, as sauropods don't seem to really get along with each other in the game, with a few exceptions, um, it would be really cool to see a fight between two different species. I think that would be a really cool feature. Um, another feature I've snuck in here is the male Nasutoceratops variant. So adding this animal would really be a good thing to see as the male Nasutoceratops has a distinct look from the female that we currently got. And also adding the baby as well, why not? Um, another feature that has recently come up is the fact that in the, in the Cretaceous Predator pack, Gigantoraptor, the flagship of the pack, is not actually able to hunt anything or predate anything. It, is able to, it, it has some cool kill animations and attack animations for um, its predators, 
but not actually to hunt guests or to hunt goats or even smaller dinosaurs. So doing a, a planet dinosaur here and allowing the Gigantoraptor to hunt smaller dinosaurs and just smaller living things in general, I think that would be a good step in the right direction to really flesh out what is a very cool dinosaur in the game. Speaking of other dinosaurs, we also have Tarbosaurus. Now, I know a lot of people aren't really big fans of the Camp Cretaceous Tarbosaurus. So if Frontier was allowed to, um, as I don't know if they uh, have the right to actually give themselves their own variant of a dinosaur that's already implemented into the franchise, I think that's something that's a bit dodgy. But if they are allowed to, they could potentially add in a more paleo-accurate Tarbosaurus um, to give it a more realistic feel. Not exactly prehistoric planets, Tarbosaurus, but at least not something that's more akin to its accurate form. But yeah, that's all I have for today. That is um, probably over 20 um, update features that I would love to see added to Jurassic World Evolution 2. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and what you would like to see added to Jurassic World Evolution 2 in future updates. Um, yeah, I mean, I would have added a lot more decorations, but I was not really going to think of many. I mean, holograms and more dinosaur skeletons, that would be really cool to see. But yeah, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more, I, I would highly recommend to subscribe, um, as it really does help me out here um, making these videos. And um, yeah, if you want to see more Jurassic World Evolution 2, more Planet Zoo. Prehistoric Kingdom dev diaries or one day gameplay. <laughs> and with the Claws uh, Minecraft add on around the corner, um, we'll sure be doing a playthrough of that. Um, yeah, there's a lot happening at the end of 2023, so stick around and see it um, as I will be covering it on the channel. As for now, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.